What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I haven't done one of these style videos in a while. I've mostly been doing how to videos, installs and updates and stuff like that. But today we're going to go over the first five things you should do to your IS300 because I've been on the Facebook groups for a while now and the groups have been getting kind of out of hand in terms of dumb questions that you see on the groups. And so these are the first five things that I recommend you should do to have a healthy, reliable car. So let's go. First things first, do your timing belt, water pump, cam seals, front rear seals, and all of that to get it over with because you never know when it's been done. A guy could have said, oh, it's been done by 5,000 miles ago, I did it myself. What proof does you have? You know, a lot of times when people are selling cars, they are lying, unless they got it from a shop and it's on the Carfax, but still you don't know what kind of parts they use, how good the shop they went to, all that stuff. So I say that to say, I did this tiny belt water pump. So what did I do? I did water pump, I did thermostat, I did cam seals, I did the gauge racing timing belt, I did serpentine belt, and I did valve cover gasket, the spark plugs, and front seal. And honestly, this has been more reliable than any car I ever owned. And it drives to the track, thrash on it, throw it down, rev it up, you know, it doesn't burn any oil, doesn't drip at all. It's been sitting here for months. Not a single drip anywhere. And so for peace of mind, just get it over with. If you don't know how to do it, shameless plug. I got a video on it, so link in the description. So next thing you should do, and honestly, this is not in any specific order, but these are things you should get done your first five mods, but is to do your suspension, specifically the front suspension. The lower ball joints are super, super crucial, especially the way Toyota designed it. This right here is the lower ball joint. It is known to snap after old age, so make sure you swap that out for at least an OEM one or something equivalent. Do your research. And while you're at it, make sure you do like the toe arms, or the tie rod, outer tie rods, and maybe the tension rod. I did every bushing in this area. So I did the, uh, the tension arm bushing with Super Pro, lower control arm bushing with Super Pro. Uh, these are Mevo Tech uppers and then OEM lower ball joints. So I don't have any fear of driving on the freeway, snapping a ball joint and just crashing. So that's a scary thing you want to avoid. Next is to change your fluids on this car. And I mean, almost all the fluids. There's so many times where I see an IC 100 with the wrong fluids and it bothers me because Toyota has it on almost all their caps, what to use. The internet is there to, to ask a way to research what you can use. The oil takes 5W30, says on a cap, right? Power steering says to use ATF. I always see people put power steering fluid in there. It is ATF. If I could find a bottle laying around because I have a bottle somewhere. That is automatic transmission fluid. It's not power steering fluid. That's how you destroy your pump. For the radiator, it should be Toyota coolant, which is pink or red, some kind of color like that. And honestly, coolant doesn't really matter too much as long as you, if you don't mix it, has to flush the system, use the right coolant, but I would really suggest and recommend to use Toyota. The diff, as well as the transmission, completely overlooked. I, I don't know a lot of people that change the fluid as often as I do, but um, 75, 90, I use Redline on my transmission because I beat up on it so much. Same with the diff, I use Redline MT90, but uh, my go-to, if I don't wanna pay that price, is um, Mobile One. Mobile One 7590 synthetic. Great option, but just replace it. Tires, tires, tires. Tires. Buy some damn new tires, and you don't have to cash out, you don't have to buy anything crazy. 
but I'm pretty sure a lot of your tires, especially Viome, they have age on them, the date when they were made, and they get old, they crack, they don't, they don't last as long. And so to get some good tires, they're not that expensive and they make the car feel so much better on the road. You know, you, you get your wheels balanced, the steering wheel doesn't shake, the car grips in the dry and in the rain. And while you were at it, get a damn alignment because people lower cars and they don't even get alignment and they're like, why is my tire wearing so fast? I just got new tires, what's wrong? And people just don't get alignment. It's just, I, honestly, when I was younger, I got my first, I lowered my first car. I didn't get alignment for a year, crashed on the freeway because I spun out on some bald ass tires. So get alignment. They're not that expensive. I mean, they are kind of expensive actually, but it's, it's so important that people overlook it all the time. If you're able to do an eyeball alignment, great, but some people just, you know, don't have the, the skills and knowledge to do it. So just go to alignment. A good alignment shop, not, not your uh, toe and go places, go to a good alignment shop, get it aligned, your tires will last its full lifespan unless you're drifting. All right, so this last one right now is honestly just a personal preference. I just want to do this. I have to do this with every car I own, except with my daily and my Sequoia. But after you get all this maintenance done, get some coilovers, some nice coilovers. Your car is ready to roll, it's driving nice, it's reliable, it feels good. Now you want it to look good, handle good, get yourself a pair of decent coilovers. I say decent because it really depends on what you want out of your car. Don't go spending thousand dollars for it to be a daily driver and don't buy some, you know, max speeding rods for your drifter. Get the appropriate setup for your use. Right now I have some TN basis, so shout out to homie Daniel for letting me borrow these because my coilovers are on back order right now, but the first mod I ever did on this car was to buy coilovers and it looked, felt great driving around, you know. It's just one of those things where if you lower your car, then people kind of know you're into cars. It's one of those things like if you know, you know. Looks cool, handles better, unless you slam it. But after you do all these maintenance mods, I think you deserved it. So enjoy the car now. Also, you may have noticed this car is on jack stands, completely torn apart, like Subframe is, you know, bare. There's no diff installed, it's painted. My hub and axles on the ground, upper control arms right there, rear toe arms. If you guys are watching it this far, you're getting a sneak peek of what's coming next. I got some, what is it called? Excessive manufacturing rear toe arms, excessive manufacturing upper control arms, um, so solid bushings for the, the knuckle, solid bushings for the, the subframe. I'm waiting for the solid bushings for the diff. I'm going welded diff, um, and yeah, I'm also going with BC coilovers, 20K, 18K rear. Hopefully the car handles a lot better. I'm super excited, super nervous, super tired of working on this damn car because it's been on Jackson for weeks and there's so many little issues that pop up, but I'm overcoming them. I'm super excited and I just worked with a company to get a new set of wheels which I'm nervous about, but excited at the same time. So if you guys made it this far, thank you, appreciate it. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys enjoy your ice 300 as much as I do. And thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you guys in the next one.